Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest, and we're just going to go through some quick information real quick that I feel like you need to know or that you might have missed or that wasn't included in my full guide video. There's going to be really key points that are important for this event that I think everybody should take away. So let's go ahead and dig in. <laughs> So first off, probably the biggest thing you need to know is that there is actually a buff to the HQ cooking. And initially, I thought there was only one tier to the buff, but you can actually get level three of dish super success if you do get to the level two of the cauldron. Now, you will have to do a lot of the event missions and objectives to get this, but it does give 60% increase to HQ rate, which is very important. HQ foods not only give you more favor with NPCs, they also give you more gathering increases or more capabilities. This is especially important when you are looking at some of the other foods that you may actually want to use, such as the gold increasing food, or the soul stone increasing food or the attack increasing food so these are going to be very important foods you may not want to trade uh, to npcs all the way or maybe you want to keep the hqs for yourself because you are going to get upwards for the hq version a 300 percent increase in soul stone drop and you are going to get a 300 percent gold increase drop as well and no doubt you are going to want to get the hq vermuda style stir fry octopus which will give uh i believe it's 400 attack and i believe it's 10% for the HQ. Let's see here. Uh, 300 attack and 10% damage for the HQ. Now, important also is to make sure you have the braised golden grove mushrooms when you are fighting the witch. Before you go, if you haven't already fought the witch, make sure you're eating the HQ version of this food. It is going to give you two additional drops, and those two additional drops are going to be guaranteed. And they will give you um, not access to like, they're not gonna give you a sore bore or anything, but they're going to give you access to potentially more ingredients or more food items or more feasts. So it's just one of those things to make your life easier as you are progging and you are pushing through this event. Make sure you're eating an HQ version of these before you kill the witch. Now, uh, homemade dumplings are very import important. Uh, they increase the acquisition rate when gathering cooking ingredients by one or two. Uh, what's a little bit confusing confusing is what this applies to and what the other food items apply to so the dumplings themselves the hq dumplings you do want to get that gives you plus two for 10 minutes that's going to apply to all the food you gather for the witch's cooking pot now all of the other food that's going to say it's going to give you pluff meat up or anything like that that's actually going to be for the familiar forest food so the most important thing you can get while you are gathering if you are trying to do witch's cauldron ingredients is actually the hq version of the homemade dumplings and i would highly recommend you grab those i think the difference between the familiar forest and um the dumpling items you would assume that an increased drop to pluff meat would also drop an increased rate to both of them but it doesn't so you do need both of those food items at the same time active now, there are a variety of ingredients you will need to farm in the background. Uh, so you will need to farm flour. You will need to farm fish, mushrooms, and milk uh, are going to be pretty important. You have been given a ton of pink potions, and no doubt people don't want to farm those. Personally, I think you should go and farm those with the pink and green pots if you do have them. Just while you're exp and get out in the real world, it also gives you an opportunity to get some chests uh, for potentially some passives. Um, coffee beans and ice do come from the daily picnic packs. We get upwards of 30 of those, uh, so you are going to want to gather as much of those as possible. We do want to talk real quick about the favor system because one thing that I kind of learned as I was going through the favor system is we did get all the farm NPCs. Is you do get tickets from doing this. So very important uh, but more specifically for the cooking um, judges you do get gifts so you get a limit of how many you can give per week but some of them give really good items so for example captain peter gives you two jelly bottles depending on the level of reward and that becomes three at a certain point so you can actually get a good amount of jelly bottles uh, from giving him for example his favorite food now you can only get the thank you reward as it's called if you give them their favorite food so you are going to need to make sure that you give him coffee now you may want to make sure you only give him nq coffee because you will be crafting a lot of hq coffees the reason you want to give him nq coffee is nq is going to give a little bit less points than the hq i believe it's eight versus ten although i think there is some 
situation where it can't stay at zero when you level someone up. But moral of the story, try and feed NQ to the people who give you thank, re thank you rewards that are really good, such as jelly bottles. Another one that has a really good thank you reward is going to be Alan. I really like Alan's because it's uh, select item. So it lets you select, for example, the cheese rock shards. And granted, you're only going to get maybe like 30 of these, I would think. But even at the fourth tier, you get five. So you'll maybe get a total of like 50, but that's 50 that you're not going to have to get from the Muse, which is really important. Uh, and then the rest, I just kind of plowed through. I just kind of pushed through uh, and I've been doing them. And of course, the easiest has been the red main. You can continue to give food items after your relationship is maxed with someone, uh, but you're only going to get metal fuse badges, unfortunately. So it probably is not going to be worth it in the long haul to continue and give them a bunch of food. I don't see it really being the best way to go. Now, a lot of people have been asking about NPCs and farm NPCs and how they operate. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and run to the familiar forest real quick and we will talk about that. Uh, if you guys didn't know, on level 3 of the Witch, there is also an Oyster Gathering perk. I don't think you need to wait until you get to Witch level 3 in order to do that. I think you can just uh, kind of bust it out and gather the Oysters when you do have the bonus from the Dumplings. Uh, now, in the forest, I do have all four NPCs active, and the one big difference between the NPCs is going to be with Tyshell. Uh, Tyshell only has here... 300 management points whereas all of the other people have upwards of 900 so you are going to need to babysit Tyshell a little bit more but you can see they have completely watered manicured my farm they've done all of this they do do this when you're not present at the farm uh, that is something important to point out here uh, but they also do it very slowly so they kind of walk at very slow NPC speed and especially the watering takes a while because the NPC Tyshell that does the watering has to water everything, whereas opposed to the other NPCs just have to work on their specific fields. Planting also takes a while, so you can let them auto do this, but it will take quite a long time. Anyway, everybody, that's all the quick tips I have, kind of what I've learned from doing this event. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below. And of course, I will be probably streaming tomorrow, so I'll catch you guys then. See y'all later.